Hello viewers, this is too fast here. In today's video, I'll show you this 4K resolution dash cam from the company DTPi. This one here is the model Mini 5. Now the interesting thing about this dash cam is it does not require a micro SD memory card. Instead, it has a built-in 64 gigabyte eMMC storage. Now this dash cam also has Wi-Fi connectivity to connect to a mobile app. It also has a built-in GPS antenna for data logging. And it uses a super capacitor instead of a rechargeable battery, so it's more reliable and can operate in extreme temperature. I'll show you everything you need to know about this dash cam, so let's get started. Let me first show you the unboxing of this DDPi Mini 5 dash cam. There's a user manual. Inside the box, there's a message from the CEO of the company. Here's a Mini 5 dash cam. There's a power cable. Cigarette lighter power adapter. And a double side tape. Right here is a windshield mount. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. By the way, it also comes with a plastic pry tool that was in the box. And also comes with two clear film that you can install on the windshield and then place a mount onto this film. Let's have a closer look at this DDPi Mini 5 dash cam. Now the first thing that stands out is how compact this dash cam is. The overall length is 4 inch, the height is 1 inch, and the depth is 1.5 inch. On the front is a front facing camera. Now this is a one channel dash cam, so it only has one camera at the front. And this camera records in 4K, 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. This dash cam uses a Sony IMX415 8 megapixel CMOS image sensor. The lens you see here is a 7 glass lens with an aperture of f1.8, so it has a very large opening, ideal for nighttime recording. The viewing angle of this lens is 140 degrees, so it will be able to cover everything that's happening in front of you. As I mentioned, this dash cam has a built-in 64 gigabyte eMMC storage, so you don't have to install any micro SD memory card to use this. This dash cam also has built-in 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so you can connect the DDPi mobile app to this and view the live view and download the recorded videos. Another nice feature about this dash cam is it uses a super capacitor instead of a rechargeable battery. You don't have to worry about this dash cam failing after a year or two, and also it will operate between minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Now looking on the side, there's a USB-C connector, this for powering the dash cam. Now you'll notice above the power port there are some metal contacts. There's actually a metal plate that'll stick to the magnet on the windshield mounts. Looking at the back, there's a microphone, there's the LED indicator, and over here on this side, there's a power switch, and you can also use a switch to turn on the Wi-Fi. Here's a look at the windshield mount. Now when you install this, you want to remove the backing on the double side tape, and then stick the surface onto the front windshield. After you do this, then slide the dash cam into this opening you see right here. Now at the back here, there's a magnet that will make contact with the dash cam and it will prevent the dash cam from sliding out. To install the dash cam, slide it into the mount. With this opening, you can plug in the power cable. And if you want, you can also adjust the angle of the dash cam. This USB power cable is 11 and a half feet long. So you should have enough length to run it from the headliner all the way down to your center console. With this end, plug into the power adapter. On the other end of the cable, you have this USB-C connector. Plug this into the dash cam. Now this dash cam does have parking mode function. But in order for you to use that feature, you will need to buy the optional DDPi hardware kit, which costs $20, and install it so you'll tap the power directly from the fuse box. So instead of using the cigarette lighter power cable, you'll be installing this cable, on one end, it has a USB-C connector. Run this up to the dash cam and plug this connector into the dash cam. On the other end of this cable, you'll run this to a fuse box. There are three wires here. The black is your ground. The red is your ignition 12 volt. And the yellow is constant 12 volt. And the way you tap the yellow and the red wire to the fuse box is by using fuse taps. This one here is a low profile mini. This one here is the ATC. And this one is a mini fuse. So depending on what style of fuse you have in your car, use the type that you need. Once you have the fuse tap installed, connect this end to the wires you see right here. When you turn off the ignition to your vehicle, the dash cam will automatically go into parking mode. So let's power on the dash cam. Hello, ding ding pie. 
Memory card initializing. Memory card initialization is complete. GPS locate succeed. Now go to your Google Play Store or Apple App Store and find the app called DDPi. Go ahead and install it. Open the app. Now make sure the Wi-Fi on your phone is turned on. Select device at the bottom. Add a new device. This is a no screen dash cam. Here it tells you install the device and power it on. Next, keep your phone within two meters of the device and connect it to the Wi-Fi. Select to set. Here you see DDPi. Select that device. The default password for this device is 12345678900. Select connect. Once it's connected, go back to the app. And right now you're looking at the live view of the dash cam. Let's go into settings. By default, the dash cam is using H.265 encoding. The recording resolution is 4K. You can set it for 2K or 1080p. The date watermark is on. Show speed is on. Flip the screen left and right is off. Speaker volume, you can adjust the speaker volume. Microphone recording is on. Switching tone is on. ADAS intelligent system reminder is set to low. Here it tells you the low settings for veteran drivers so the alarm range is smaller. If you set this to high, this for novice drivers, and the alarm range is wider. What that means is it will be more sensitive in alerting you if let's say you're drifting onto another lane while you're driving. And if you want, you can also turn it off. I'll leave this in the low setting. Let's go back. You can also adjust the collision sensitivity by default set to middle. You can set it for high, middle, low, or off. Now for the parking monitor feature, you do need to install the hardware kit and here's a setting for the parking monitor after the vehicle is stationary for 15 minutes. By default, it's set to shrink the video. I believe this will record in a lower frame rate to save storage space. You can also set this to ordinary video, and with this, it will record at the regular 30 frames per second. You can also set dormancy. If you use this setting, the dash cam will go into standby mode and wake up when an impact is detected to record a short video clip. Go back. Under management, you have the dash cam Wi-Fi name, dash cam Wi-Fi password, manage dash cam storage, and about device. The about device will show you the software version and the serial number of the device. Now while looking at the live view, if you want to take a picture of what you're seeing, press the capture button right here. It'll take a photo and then save it to your phone. So let's take this to the vehicle, get it installed, and we'll check out the daytime and nighttime video along with using the app to look at the live view and downloading the video. To install the dash cam is very simple. Remove the backing on double side tape and then you can stick this directly onto the windshield. Now this dash cam also comes with this film that you see right here. If you want to, you can install this film onto the window first and then stick this onto the film and that will allow for easy removal later on. But if you don't want to use that, you can stick this directly onto the windshield. After you install it, you can adjust the angle Connect the USB cable, run this cable up to the headliner, over to the A pillar, and down to your center console. Plug the cigarette lighter power plug into your 12 volt accessory port. When you turn on the ignition, the dash cam will power on and begin recording. Hello, ding ding pot. And when you turn off the ignition, the dash cam will automatically power down. Now one thing I like about the design of this windshield mount is it allows you to remove the dash cam very easily. With the dash cam powered off, disconnect the power cable, and this dash cam is held on by a magnet on the side. So all you have to do is push the dash cam out, and the dash cam comes out. When you're ready to reinstall it, just put it back in and connect the power cable. Here's a look at the live view using the app. If I turn this sideways, It'll automatically switch to a landscape mode. With this timeline, you can select preview, today, yesterday, or previous day. And then you can drag this timeline back and forth. And it'll automatically play back the recorded video. If you want to download the video, select download. Now it's downloading this three minute video clip. Download completed, 
So now the video file is on your phone. If you install the hardware kit, then you can use the parking mode feature on the dash cam. I've gone ahead and set the recording to dormancy. In this mode, the dash cam will be in standby mode with ignition off. Once it detects an impact to the vehicle, it will automatically turn on and begin recording. Now if you want, you can also set it to shrink the video for smaller video size, or set it to ordinary video for regular normal recording. To simulate an impact to the vehicle, I'll hit the A pillar with my fist. Hello, ding ding pi. GPS locate succeed. And right now the dash cam is recording the video. Now the recording will continue until it drops to the voltage protection level that you set in the settings for the dash cam. Here you're looking at the settings screen, and I've set the cutoff voltage to 12 volt. Reach too low, shutting down. As you can see in the recorded video, this DDPi Mini 5 dash cam is a very good performer. With a 4K resolution, the video recording is very clear with good contrast, exposure and white balance. You can easily read the license plate both daytime and nighttime. Also the overall design is very compact and the installation is very simple. And with a magnetic mount, it's very easy to remove the dash cam if you need to. Now at the time of this review, this Mini 5 retailed for $140. If you're looking for a one channel dash cam with very good video recording, you can check out the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.